Welcome to Positive Church. In 1 John 4, verse 8, it says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Churches teach the biblical teaching of keeping the Sabbath. Well, if God is love, like our Bible says, then we must keep the Sabbath. We must spend 24 hours out of our week refreshing and cleansing our lives by becoming love. 24 hours every Sunday, not judging or criticizing, jumping to conclusions, but giving everyone, including yourself, a break. The Sabbath is a spiritual cleansing of love. On the main street in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, is the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. If you're a romantic person, this could be a place to do some research. Robert Ripley reported the longest and simplest love letter ever written was by a painter of the name of Marcel de Laurier in 1875 to Madeline. He wrote this phrase, I love you, wrote it out 1,875,000 times. He hired a scribe to do this, and he dictated I love you word for word and had the scribe repeat it. All in all, the phrase was repeated 5,625,000 times before it reached its destination. How could that lady turn down that man's proposal? We are celebrating love in February, and we're also celebrating a great day of Ash Wednesday, which begins Lent. There is no better time to become more loving to humanity, to our spouse, to our boyfriend or girlfriend, and all the people in our lives. It is truly a godly act because we are allowing divine love to come in and through us. The two great things to hold on to in this world are God and each other. Love is a power that links the lonely island of different people's souls, beaten by icy separating seas of ignorance, fear, and circumstance. Wouldn't it be a glorious time to begin this month, this moment, a chain of love throughout your entire city and then throughout the entire nation. We can do this by allowing this chain of love to begin with who? With you and with me. By saying yes right now to allow divine love to flow through us. During the Lenten period of 40 days that will begin Ash Wednesday, February 27th, to be loving to everyone we meet for 40 days to suspend judgments, to suspend anger and criticism and condemnation, and agree to be loving for 40 days. At the end of this experiment, if we choose to take up again hate and anger, disagreements with others, we can do that. But I don't believe we will. For 40 days, we're going to truly follow Jesus Christ, and we're going to become a sample of God's love. I pray that this is a special time for you, and I pray it's a special time for each one of us. We know that when we become love in this world, that that is the answer to society's problems. Well, why not make your life a living, loving chain? Why not make your life the link in that chain that will make a difference? a true difference with your life. Wouldn't it be great if just for this month you became this special place on the planet that was a lighthouse of love, and then you continued doing it. You continued doing it for the rest of your life because you learned how through practice. I pray that you have a wonderful smile on your face to show to everyone you meet. 
I pray that you make it a beacon for everyone to enjoy and savor and hold on to. One of the secrets of life is that it's much easier to love everyone than to hate some because hate becomes a poison inside of our soul. Love is the theme song of the universe. It is a power of new life, not just in you, but in those people that come on your path. We make a great mistake by thinking that love must be returned. To truly be loving action, love must be free. It must not bind. It must be with open hands and open arms to all that cross our path. And I pray that you will take up this. I pray that it will be a true dedication to God. So many have loved from the basis of lack. What happens when we live on a basis of lack love? Well, number one, if we're loving from lack, our credo must be that we have the idea that we lack something and we are incomplete. Number two, we're searching in our life because we need something to compensate for that lack. Only by looking outside of ourselves can we find a person who will fill that lack in completeness. Number three, from the foundation of lack, we become dependent on that relationship. Number four, in time, we do not fill our needs, and this results in hostility inside of us. Many relationships are like this. We need to realize that we have God's love with us, and they do too, and that we lack for nothing. We're coming into a new foundation of God's love. Number one, we know that we do not lack anything. Number two, we know that there is no necessity to search outside of ourselves for a special relationship. Number three, because we radiate love, we attract special relationships in our life from a higher level. Not needy ones, but special relationships. Sharing that which is God's love. Sharing with that which we already have. To a new level of awareness of sharing. Not really wanting anything from anyone else. This is what we see when we see the real exalted ones go through life. They should be the people that we want to, want to emulate in our own lives. We should stand up for the very best in life, for the very best in humanity as a people. We're many different races and faiths, but all becoming one people. And if we're unwilling to love, the expression of life called the human, which we have seen with our eyes, how are we going to love the source, God, which we have seen? Some people say, I love God, but it's people I can't stand. How can we love music and not harmony? How can we love the morning and not the day? How can every individual not be an inlet and an outlet for the complete love of God? We can't possibly love anyone or anything unless we first love ourselves in a spiritual way, as a God creation. As that love comes through us, what does it do to us? Well, what does it do to the inside of the hose? It cleans out to the core, and we too become infilled with that God love. I pray that I am never restricting the love of God, and I pray that you don't either. I pray that we realize that we have great possibility in life, that we are, in a matter of speaking, the hose of God, and love has to flow through us. And we can put out many fires with this, it is the only safe way we can live as a people, with our fellow humans and with ourselves. Love gives all, but it also demands all. 
Love is the toughest taskmaster and the hardest discipline in the universe. Why? Because we also have the baggage that we carry around right above our eyes in our human minds. So we can easily slip back and saying, well, now, wait a minute. You did this to me in the past. We have to rise above our past. Life to be alive has to consent to live above yesterday. It's not held down. It's freed today and brand new life comes in an awareness of God, in an awareness of love. Booker T. Washington once said this. He said that he had the right to hate anyone, but he said, I shall allow no man to belittle my soul by making me hate him. It has been said, as soon as you begin to condemn them, you become one of them. Psalms says, unless the Lord builds the house, all that build it will labor in vain. Well, the house is your life. If God is building your house, what materials does God use? Divine love. Illumination dissolves all the material ties and binds men and women together with golden chains of spiritual understanding. It acknowledges only the leadership of Christ. It has no ritual or rule but divine love other than worship the the real key is to know what that means. Worship means worth-ship. To know your worth to God. To know your worth to other people. To know how needed you are. And what is needed from you? More than anything else, it is your love. People are lonely. People need your touch. They need your friendliness. And they need you going the extra mile. There was a story of a widower who had lost his only son. One day he saw the house of one of his neighbors was on fire. The aged owner was rescued, but her orphan grandson was trapped inside the blaze. Dixon climbed an iron pipe on the side of the house and lowered the boy to safety. His hand that held on to the pipe was badly burned. Shortly after the fire, the grandmother who lived with the boy died. The townspeople wondered among themselves, who will care for this boy? Two volunteers appeared at the town council wanting to care for the boy. The first was a father who had lost his son and wanted to adopt the orphan as his own. And then there was this man, William Dixon, who was to speak next. But instead of speaking, instead of saying anything, he merely held up his scarred hand. And when the vote was taken, the boy was given to him. Love, my friend, cannot just stay inside of us. It has to be expressed. We have to go the extra mile. People are children of God, but orphans of society. They're waiting for our love. I ask you for Valentine's Day and then the next 40 days of Lent to hold with me in a ceasefire with anyone in your life that has harmed you, that has spoken against you. I ask you to replace it for 40 days with love. Now you might say, I've tried. I can't do that. I just don't have it in my mind to do this. Well, then pray for it. Ask for divine love to come through you. Your mind is not alone. Your mind is fused with divine mind. And the thoughts of love, the actions of love, will come through you. I believe you can be changed in this period of time. And I mean changed at depth for the rest of your life. Lent was one of the periods that profoundly changed my life. And when you use this period to sustain from negative thinking, 
because that's really what Lent means. L lets E eliminate N negative T thinking. I ask you to abstain from negative thinking about anyone else or about yourself and replace that with love. Eternal life is not a hereafter proposition. It is life eternal today. And I want you to have life so dynamic that there's no dips in it. I want you to have joy and happiness overflowing and more love than you have ever had before in your life. To me, that is eternal life from the minute you get up in the morning till the minute you go to bed at night. Alive, fully living, fully being that person that comes from the very heart of God and the heart of our Bible. God is the greatest lover, so loved the greatest degree, the world the greatest number, his only son the greatest gift, that everyone who ever is the greatest invitation believes the greatest simplicity, in him the greatest person, may not perish the greatest deliverance, but the greatest difference, may have the greatest certainty, eternal life, the greatest possession. That's what Martin Luther said. There is only one God, and that God, according to Jesus, is love. Let us follow God in this new exalted way and become a sample of the great example. I wish you a profound spiritual experience of love this February. I bid you happy Valentine's Day and happy Lent. And it will be because love is going to welcome you back into the fold of God in a profound way, in a higher realization of God than perhaps you've ever had before. And may you know that love that never varies. God bless you.